average height, shapely with silky long chestnut brown hair, hazel eyes, and a rather yellow complexion. Her nose was small and straight, and her mouth was well formed. However, she kept it closed most of the time, so not to reveal her bad teeth. She was praised for her elegance, style, and low, silvery, beautifully modulated voice. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be transforming Josephine Bonaparte, the wife of Napoleon, to see how she might have looked in real life. If you're new to my channel, welcome! Here on Mortal Faces, I transform historic portraits to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life as well as talk a little bit about them. So thank you for watching, subscribe for more historic recreations, and let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. Josephine, the eldest daughter of Joseph Teixe de la Pacheque, an impoverished aristocrat who had a commission in the navy, lived the first 15 years of her life on the island of Martinique. She was born in 1763, and Marie Antoinette would have been 8 years old at the time. Josephine was the eldest of three daughters. Her grandfather was the first to settle in Martinique in 1726, even though he came from an ancient French family of country gentry, in Martinique he seemed to have lived in poverty. So when his son was born, Joseph, who was Josephine's father, Joseph was sent to France as a page boy to the Dauphine, Louis XVI's mother. He spent the next three years in France and then returned to Martinique to marry Rose-Claire de Verger de Senois. She was from one of the oldest European families on the island. This is when Josephine was born and her two sisters. Joseph stayed on the island as a plantation owner but was always on the verge of bankruptcy and he suffered from ill health. Josephine had a typical upper class upbringing. She went to school in the capital for four years and studied reading, writing, singing, dance, and embroidery. Her first marriage was a bit of a mess, really. Her aunt was the mistress to the richer but less noble family, Francois de Bouarnais. He had a son, Alexandre, with his wife, and then left him with the Taché family as he and his wife went back to France for a bit. When he was of age, Josephine's aunt wanted him to marry one of her nieces, so Josephine's parents were like, how about our second daughter, Catherine? Sure, they said. Catherine then died. Okay, Francois the father said, what about the youngest? No, she's only 12, said her mother. But you can take the oldest, Josephine. She was three years younger than him, Alexandre. So they married in France. She was 16, he 19. She popped out two kids, one of them married Napoleon's brother, and eventually became queen herself as well. But that is another story. This marriage not a happy one. Alexandre abandoned the family to live with his mistress and frequented brothels. In the end, Josephine managed to get court separated on his expense and moved out. But peace didn't last too long as the reign of terror would arrive soon in 1794. She would have been 31. Her husband was imprisoned and eventually guillotined. She was imprisoned as well due to her close aristocratic ties but her life was spared thanks to the fall and execution of Robespierre days before her own execution. This ended the reign of terror, so she was freed and a new law even allowed her to claim her husband's possessions, so she was now a not so wealthy widow as she had spent all her money and was in heavy debts, but she hid it well under a disguise of worldly experience. It's in her widowhood that she decided to be free and do what she wanted, so she had many affairs with leading political individuals, and it was here that she met Napoleon, who was six years younger and became his mistress. It was 1795, and he was still a commander in the French army. It would be another 10 years before he became emperor of France at the age of 34. What's funny though, Josephine reduced her age by four years and he increased his by 18 months on their marriage certificate to appear closer in age. His mother didn't like her. While the ideal Corsican woman was diligent, frugal, passionate, and dedicated to family, Josephine was an immodest, spendthrift, and easygoing, but emotional. A few years prior to this, while Napoleon was in the army, his mother and younger siblings had to flee Corsica due to war. Even though they too came from lesser nobility, their house was burned, and arriving in France, they were penniless and forced to put dressmaker as the occupation on her passport because they arrived on the height of the reign of terror. She was even reduced to lining in queue at a food bank. 
so she felt clumsy and awkward as if some Hollywood star married her son. It is known that Josephine did not love Napoleon as much as he loved her, and that it took her years before she warmed to his affections. In replying to his love letters, she rarely wrote back, and when she did, it was dry and often tepid. Immediately, Napoleon had to leave Paris for another post. So Josephine began an affair with Hippolyte Charles, who was a southerner. He was very handsome, with also a moustache and very relaxed, something Napoleon was not. Rumors spread to Napoleon, and he was infuriated. Afterwards, their relationship was never the same, and this is when Napoleon began to take lovers as revenge. When he was crowned emperor in 1804, the queen's offices were reinstated, so she got all her ladies and waitings and servants as if it were before the revolution. But even despite being caught in the bedroom of one of her ladies and waitings, Napoleon still loved Josephine. However, it became clear she could not have a child. When his heir and nephew died from sickness in 1807, that was the last straw. He needed an heir and had no other option but to annul their marriage and find a new wife. The divorce took place in 1810. It was a grand occasion, but solemn. After the divorce, Josephine lived in the Chateau de Malmaison near Paris. She remained on good terms with Napoleon and became Duchess of Nevers. Josephine died of pneumonia in Malmaison in 1814, soon after walking with Emperor Alexander I of Russia in the gardens of her home. She was begging him to join Napoleon in exile. Napoleon, you see, was in exile in Elba, a Mediterranean island in Italy, after he was stopped in his tracks for world domination. Despite being full of kindness, generosity, and charm, she built her relations for fulfilling financial and social needs. Perhaps she got that from her own parents, who were always on the verge of bankruptcy. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos. Each of your subscriptions has helped this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments you want to see next. I do make a list of all your suggestions. And I will see you in the next one.